Have you ever wondered how we know the age of certain objects? When archaeologists discover new cultural heritage objects, how do they figure out how old they are? The answer is radiometric dating. And in today's video, we will talk about radiocarbon dating. Hello and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Maria and I create videos related to cultural heritage and about the different scientific methods that we can use to analyze objects of cultural heritage. Today, we will learn about a scientific method called radiocarbon dating. We will learn what carbon dating is and we will see the applications of radiocarbon dating to cultural heritage. First, let's see what exactly is radiocarbon. In a previous video, we talked about isotopes, what they are and how we can detect the different isotopes of elements using mass spectrometry. And we've seen that isotopes are forms of elements that contain the same number of protons in the nucleus, but vary in their neutron numbers. You can see here three isotopes of carbon. Each isotope has six protons in the nucleus, but the number of neutrons can be six for carbon-12, 7 for carbon-13, and 8 for carbon-14. Carbon-12 is the most abundant carbon isotope with a natural abundance of about 98.89%. It is followed by carbon-13 with a much smaller natural abundance of only about 1.1%. These are stable isotopes of carbon. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope and it is found in trace amounts. And this is the element from which the name of the method, radiocarbon dating, is coming from. So that's radiocarbon, the isotope of carbon that has six protons and eight neutrons in the nucleus. But where does it come from? It all starts in the Earth's upper atmosphere. So let's have a look and see what's happening there. When the cosmic rays, which are actually high energy particles, interact with particles in the Earth's upper atmosphere, they can lead to the removal of neutrons from atoms. These neutrons can then be absorbed by the nitrogen atoms that are present in the Earth's atmosphere. This interaction leads to the formation of carbon-14 atoms. Then the carbon-14 atoms interact with the oxygen atoms from the atmosphere, which leads to the formation of carbon dioxide with the carbon-14 isotope in the composition of carbon dioxide. This means that the carbon dioxide, which is taken up by the plants, contains also carbon dioxide formed with the carbon-14 isotope. So now we have the carbon-14 isotope present in the plants. Animals then eat the plants, and this is how carbon-14 ends up being present in all living beings. And as long as they are alive, they continue to have the same ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 as the atmosphere through a constant exchange with the atmosphere. But this all changes when the organism dies and the exchange with the atmosphere stops. And that's when we start seeing the decay of carbon-14. Carbon-14 decays through a radioactive decay called a beta decay. Through this process, the unstable carbon-14 isotope transforms into nitrogen-14, a stable isotope of nitrogen. And there's also a release of an electron and an antineutrino during this radioactive decay process. The last two particles are outside the scope of this video. What we are interested in here is the decay of carbon-14 into nitrogen-14. The time that it takes for the initial amount of carbon-14 atoms present in the sample to decay to half of that amount is called a half-life. And for carbon-14, this half-life is 5730 plus minus 40 years. And you can see this decay in this figure. You can see that after one half-life, that is after about 5730 years, the number of radioactive carbon-14 nuclei decreased to half. And if we wait another half-life after this, so then after about 11,460 years, the number of radioactive nuclei decreases to half of the previous amount, which is now a quarter of the initial amount. And this process keeps on going, and after every new half-life, 
the amount of radioactive carbon-14 nuclei decreases to half of the previous amount. And by knowing this, and by looking at the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in a sample, we can find out the age of a sample up to an age limit of about 50,000 years when the amount of carbon-14 is too small to be measured. Radiocarbon dating has so many applications in the field of cultural heritage. We can use it to find out the age of any object that contains carbon up to an age limit of about 50,000 years. So that's quite a lot of objects. One application of radiocarbon dating is the dating of the Dead Sea Scrolls. When analyzing the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are texts of high religious and cultural value, scientists from several laboratories around the world managed to date several scrolls to the period of around 400 BCE to around 300 CE. However, when analyzing samples from the Turin Shroud, the cloud that supposedly covered Jesus' body after death, radiocarbon dating revealed that the shroud samples that were examined actually date back to the Middle Ages. But does that mean that the shroud itself was made during the Middle Ages? Could we use one study alone to reveal everything about the age and origin of the Turin Shroud? The answer is no. So we'll talk more about the evidence from different research studies in a video dedicated entirely to the Turin Shroud. So stay tuned for future videos. In future videos, we will examine in more details the radiocarbon dating of cultural heritage objects. And we will also learn about the radiometric dating using the isotopes of other elements from the periodic table. I hope you enjoyed learning about radiocarbon dating and how we can use radiocarbon dating to identify the age of cultural heritage objects. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell button to receive notifications when I upload new fun videos from the world of cultural heritage and heritage science. Wait, don't leave just yet. I have a question for you. If you could find out the age of any cultural heritage object using radiocarbon dating, which object would you like to analyze? Let me know your answer in the comments below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!